All right, so mounting Archer's 140 pound cold press on wooden strainer stock, one inch thick. First thing is to determine where the top is. Top of the painting is up here and we'll mark that so we don't forget it. Let's put a little arrow pointing up. Oh, so I'm not going to forget that. Now, the strainer stock is three inches less than the paper, so we're going to have an inch and a half all around. So one inch for the side and then a half inch. Strainer stock has a little bump on the top. That's so when you stretch it, the paper spreads over the top and touches as little wood as possible. So we'll set this up here to be equal all the way around. About an inch and five eighths, inch and a half. Right there. And there. There and there. Okay. I'm going to make some lines here. Helps me keep it straight while doing the stretching. Now that we have our lines, we're going to dampen it. Got a sponge and some warm water. And we're going to get it nice and soft. That's why I have this more or less waterproof material underneath. You don't want to get the top of the painting wet because then the paint will run. And get real moist. So it softens up during the stretching and then after the stretching when it dries out it will tighten. Be nice and tight when we're done. Alright. Strainer stock has the top and the bottom, so I set this back on the lines. The orientation of this painting is horizontal, and so we're going to finish up the top and the bottoms before wrapping the ends around on the corners. You'll see that later. But we always going to pre-crease. Alright, we're going to start with the top. Pre-crease that. Now, whenever you do this, whether it's paper or canvas, always start from the middles and work out. So, a couple of nice... Uh, there. This is just a regular old staple tacker at any hardware store. Alright, now putting a little strain on this, pulling the paper and pushing on the wood and then wrapping it around tight like that. The staples, you'll notice, go in at, at an angle, never across, never up and down. It's stronger that way and works with the grain of the wood. Now, same thing on the side, pre-crease, You see that we're losing a little paint off the surface here. <laughs> so I don't, just in case I come back that direction again, I'll keep that dry. Okay, now the other side. nice to have at least a half an inch of wrap around if you can get it. Anything else might make it a little bit hard to work with. All right, now that the centers are done, do the same thing, just working along both edges. Keep on stretching it. Right. 
can hop over to the other side. And stretch that. Takes a bit of finger strength. Okay. Now, I'm going to put one more on the edges. You don't want to get your, your final edge too close to the corner, as you will see, because there won't be enough room for you to wrap the corner. You'll see that when I get there. So I'm going to stop here on the edges. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I usually work to music. I'm humming the shadow of your smile right now. Okay, now I can finish up the top and the bottom. It's easier to work with this when you're standing. You can bear down on it. Use your weight. Yeah, don't be afraid to use a lot of staples. <laughs> All right, now we're coming to the part about wrapping it. All right, now, this is called a bone or a fid, any, any smooth piece of utility will work. So I'm going to crease this corner at a 45 degree angle, fold, fold the bottom straight across, actually I don't want to push that in there yet, and then bend, bend this over. You'll notice if it's done at the right angle, your edge will be parallel to the edge of the strainer stock. So I'm using this bone to crease it and flatten it. And then I'm going to put one staple on the edge just to hold it still. Alright, here comes the tricky part. And pull this back and curl that up. Fold this together. So now, now the crease is here and it won't be seen from the side once you've hung it on the wall or wherever it ends up. The, the, the fold is only seen from the bottom or the top. So pull that up and do the same thing we did on the other side. One down, three to go. Putting a little crease in at the 45, flattening the bottom edge around, and curving it down like that. Flattening it down, tacking it. I've got a That's just to hold it still. Don't tack it up here because you won't be able to do this. So it's tearing a little bit. But you won't ever see it. Sometimes it works. The 
it's actually getting a little stiff. That's See, all right. Work, there's a collage paper and gesso on that. Mm, yeah, that's very stiff. You would use the same technique if you were doing canvas. Get a little more moisture on there because it starts to stiffen up. Okay. Wrap that around. Fold it over. You know, I'm going to try and pull this up without stapling it this time. Because it gives me a little more flexibility. That worked real well. Mm -hmm. Alright, make sure you get that part flattened out. Oh yeah, I wasn't going to staple it. It worked really well last time not stapling it, so I can lift it up. So when you lift it up, you get this edge matching up with this edge, and then you'd be pretty sure that this fold will be perpendicular to the corner of your stock. way is up and there it is now it's kind of floppy right now because it's still wet but when it dries it'll dry hard and tighten up and after that's all done you will take your frame which has already been you can see pre-drilled pre-drilled to put screws in from the back into the wood to hold the stock in place. The frame has been made so the inside is one inch larger than the stock itself so we've got a nice little half inch gap all the way around and you can see from the sides. I'm Brad. Down in the frame shop at Carlin's Gallery, pleased to bring you this lesson on mounting pictures 